Good morning, my friend. I hope that this day that you're getting ready to have is incredibly blessed and that God will put his hand of favor upon you. Um, we are having a great week here in Nebraska, and next week's going to be even better. But I hope that this this uh, week and this day brings something special for you, that uh, God's got a plan for you, and then he will shine his light upon the steps that you take today. I'm feeling incredibly blessed today. We've just had some amazing emails and contacts from you, from listeners uh, and readers this past week. This is just an amazing community that's come up. You know, we're, um, we're all drawing together to help each other in different ways, and and that's just such a blessing how the church and the kingdom have moved into this digital age. And, and uh, we're just grateful for you. Um, and so I hope that uh, whatever's happening with you today, that you bless somebody with your words and with the actions that you take and that somebody blesses you. And if you're hurting, I hope that and I pray that somebody sees you and hears you. And I hope that that having been heard and seen will turn into you seeing and hearing somebody else. And we just draw closer and closer together. And by the way, that... Um, that community that we have because of the podcast is really founded around and centers around the newsletter. So if you're not getting my weekly letter, I encourage you to sign up. It becomes a real community. You can have a community here too, w1md.com slash newsletters, how you get connected and turn this from just a podcast experience into something real in your life. w1md.com slash newsletter. These people care about each other. They're in 40 countries every week. And it's amazing how many real world relationships have started because of the digital world community that's here. So check it out. If you're not getting the newsletter, check it out. I promise you will get as much or more benefit than you're getting from the podcast. And we're so grateful that you're here. Hey, today, uh, I actually, speaking of the newsletter, I'm going to cover some ground with you this morning that I covered in the newsletter last week because I think every once in a while I write a newsletter. I don't know why we call them newsletters. It's more like a little prescription for self-brain surgery. But anyway, um, every once in a while I'll write something that turns out to be something that uh, Lisa will say or I'll say, man, that should be a whole podcast episode. Or once in a while I'll do a podcast that turns into something I need to write about in the newsletter and they kind of feed off each other. So if you're getting the newsletter, then I apologize. You've heard some of these ideas before. But if you're not, this will give you a taste of the kinds of things that we talk about every Sunday. Every Sunday uh, since 2014, we've had the, the letter gone out without fail. And so today we're going to look at how to start today off right by getting our minds in a better place. So if you get your mind right, then everything else works better, right? That's, that's the whole idea behind self-brain surgery. If you go through something hard, you learn how to think about it in a different way. That's how you handle it. It's how you survive it. It's how you find your peace and your faith again. So the first thing is you got to separate the, the concept of mind from the brain, the organ of the brain. The, the organ is the physical location of where your mind and your spirit, your heart, your soul, and all those things are. And we'll talk about brain health many times on the podcast, just not today. Today we're going to talk about the mind, the part of your brain that is who you are. Your mind, for the purposes of this discussion, is the part of your brain that produces your thoughts, your emotions, your memories, mood, affect, behavior. It's your belief system, your worldview, your style, your core. It's you, whatever, whoever you are, Brian or Lisa or Al or Kristen, or, you know, whoever you are out there, Juliana or Lola, Charles, it's your belief system and, and your you-ness, that's your mind. The, the, the thing that makes you you, the thing that God crafted into you is your mind. Your mind makes you you. Getting your mind right then at the start of every day will set you up for success all day long. So I want you to talk about today, I want to talk about the systems and the routines that I use to get that done. I've done a podcast in the past called Systems Keep You Sane. And for me, like if I don't have a very organized, carefully organized way that I put even simple things like where, where I put my keys in my wallet, I will literally walk out the door without my wallet or my keys if I don't have them in the same place every day. I, I literally have to, I need to systematize that to the point that it's just automatic that I reach into that drawer and my hand's going to land on those things. Or if they're not, if I have a, if I don't get in a diligent habit of following a system every day, then I really get off and I'll spend time and waste time looking for things that ought to be systematized. And I would just challenge you to say that if you spend more than five minutes a week looking for stuff that you need every day, you need a system around that. If you ever have to look for your purse or look for your keys or look for your wallet, you need a system. You need a place. You need to, you need to square that away because you're wasting five minutes of your life every day or every week on something that ought not to take you that time. Now, how much better would things be if you didn't have that little tiny nagging frustration of not knowing where your keys are, right? Get yourself a system. So we're going to talk about that today. 
We're going to talk about the systems and routines that I use personally to get the done, to get the thing done to where I'm set up. I got my mind right at the start of the day and it's setting me up for success. We're going to learn how to manage our minds and we're going to start today. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get it done, you can get the show notes and more at drleewarren.pod com. That's drleewarren.podbean.com. And if you'd like the show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. All right, friend, this might surprise you, but there is nobody else in the world in the history of humanity or into the future of history of humanity. All through eternity, there is nobody else that has your mind. And that take that to heart. God made you individually and uniquely you. And that means that your mind is super important because God made your mind uniquely for a purpose. It's his purpose. So what would it look like if you just spent a few minutes every day working on your mind? And my friend Daniel Amen, who's a world famous psychiatrist, he says it's helpful to think about your thinking. I've said that to you a million times. Think about your thinking. Juliana Kelly wrote in one time after she learned the ideas behind self brain surgery. Juliana is a listener from Michigan. And she, right, Juliana? I think Michigan. <laughs> um, now that I say it out loud, I'm not sure, but I think she's from Michigan. Anyway, Juliana wrote in and she said, you know what? Before I started using the self brain surgery techniques, I thought that my thoughts just happened to me. I thought that my thoughts just happened to me. Well, they don't. You need to learn how to think about your thinking. You can manage them. People wrongly believe that how they think and feel is determined for them, but it is absolutely not. You, my dear friend, my dear listener, you are in charge of how you think, feel, and behave. You're not in charge of all the things that happen to you, but you are in charge of how you respond to them, how you think about them, how you feel about them. Remember, Christine Kane said, just because something happens to you doesn't mean it's about you. And we often make the mistake of making our circumstances become about us instead of just around us. And the problem is that from a neurochemical perspective, your baseline programming is aimed towards protective negative thoughts and feelings. That's for survival. We've talked about it before. But it's good to assume that there's a bear in that cave so you don't go in there and get eaten up. But it, but if you don't actively manage your mind, then you'll spend your whole life bouncing around from one negative thought to another one. And your feelings will determine what you do and how your life plays out. If you don't square away the idea of understanding how to manage your baseline perspective and those negative thoughts will drive the ship. That's just the way you're wired. They're going to be in charge if you don't manage them. And one of the most important ways to get your mind right first every day is to focus on clearing it out and directing your mind's behavior in a purposeful way at the first part of every day. This is super important. The idea that you wake up and you have an agenda that you are going to accomplish to wrestle control of your mind from your baseline negative set. And I believe the best way to do that I'm talking from 52 years of experience here. The best way to get your mind right and set yourself up for success for the coming day is to spend a little time with your creator and let him set the tone. Matthew 6.33 says it this way. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you too. And the context in which Jesus said that, you should go read the chapter, Matthew 6. The context is, he's listing all these things that people worry about. Do you have, are you going to have enough food? Are you going to have stuff to wear? Are you going to have provision? Are you going to have money? Are you going to have hunger? Are, are all those things. And Jesus says, don't worry. You won't be hungry. You won't be naked. You don't have to be afraid. 
Put your mind on the kingdom and I'll take care of the rest. And it's, it's true. Like when you, when you set your mind on things above, then the, the things of the earth tend to fall in line. You, you th- and I'm not saying it's some magic trick, right? I'm not saying that if you just obey God and follow him that everything in your life works out. No. But what happens is when you, when you set your mind on him and you put your mind in the context of how he wants you to be and what he intends for your life to be about, it clears away the clutter, the negativity starts to peel away, and you start to see ways to get to the things that you need. You start to see opportunities and possibilities instead of frustrations and fears. And it's true. You get your mind squared away. Everything else follows. And that's where the peace comes from. It's all about the peace and protection that God gives you when you seek him first. If you don't believe me, just try it. Just get up in the morning and spend a little bit of time focusing on him first. And you'll start to see everything kind of peel away. We're going to talk about how in a minute. Because in our modern lives... We don't have to jump out of bed and go kill a deer or fight off a bear to feed our family, usually. We don't have to walk down to the river with a bucket and bring water home to drink. We don't. I mean, people in other countries do. When our daughter Kaylin was in Nepal, they had to walk down a hill and buy water in a bucket to bring it up the hill to the place where they were staying to take a bath every day. And there's people living like that right now all over the world. So if you don't have to do that, take a moment to be grateful for it. That you don't have to get out of bed and walk somewhere to grab water to bring it back to brush your teeth. We don't have to skin the deer to make clothes anymore, usually, in the United States at least. So those things seem less likely to distract us and keep us from seeking him first, but yet we still have all kinds of distractions. So maybe read Matthew 6 again and substitute things that do threaten you. If it's not hunger or clothing or shelter, what does threaten you to keep you from seeking him first? Is it Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? How many of you, how many listeners... How many of people in my house, how many, how many times do I do it where first thing I do when I roll out of bed while I'm you know, clearing my eyes is open up my phone and look at something, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or email, the news, thinking about work for the day, whatever it is. And before you know it, you've spent the first hour of your day mad about something that you're going to have to deal with when you get to the office or frustrated or jealous or, or worried about something somebody said on Twitter or some picture somebody posted on Instagram and how much better their life looks than yours or something like that. And just notice that the promise in Matthew 6 is that seeking him first is good for you. He says, seek, him, seek you first the kingdom and then all this other stuff will come for you. Why? Because seeking him first gives him honor and it sets your mind right. I'm not afraid. I'm clear in my mind that God's got this covered and I know my place in the relationship and he's first and he's going to take care of me. And now that you've started with him first, there's there's something I call the five R's. The five R's of mind control is how you kind of set your mind right and how you get things to square away so that your day will be under your control. Here, here they are, the five R's. Number one, renew. Do not allow this world to mold you in its own image. Instead, be transformed from the inside out by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2. As a result, you will be able to discern what God wills and whatever God finds good, pleasing, and complete. So Romans 12 says, renew your mind. Don't let the world set your mind on what it ought to be. You set it. Let, let the word of God renew your mind first thing in the morning, and then you'll know what God's will is, and he'll help you get it accomplished number two reset this comes from philippians 4 8 finally brothers and sisters fill your minds with beauty and truth meditate on whatever is honorable whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is good whatever is virtuous and praiseworthy think on these things reset your mind number three retake second corinthians 10 5 we are taking prisoner every thought every emotion and subduing them into obedience to the anointed one. This is super important. Your baseline negative thoughts will subdue you. They will direct your steps. They will tell you what your day is going to look like. They will tell you what your life feels like. If you don't subdue them, you have to take captive every thought and every emotion and you are going to set the agenda of how you're going to feel and how you're going to respond even though you can't always set the agenda of what happens to you you can certainly set how you feel and respond to it number four be realistic first john 1 8 through 10 if we go around bragging that we have no sin then we are fooling ourselves and are strangers to the truth but if we own up to our sins god shows that he is faithful and just by forgiving us of our sins and purifying us from the pollution of all the bad things we've done if we say we have not sinned then we depict god as a liar 
and show that we have not let his word find its way into our hearts. Noting the truth of our own issues allows us to set our minds and hearts towards defeating them. So we have to be realistic. And finally, number five, be ready to roll. Stay focused. Set your mind on what's above, not on earthly things, because your old life is dead and gone. Your new life is now hidden and meshed with the anointed one who is God. Colossians 3, 2 and 3. So be ready to roll. If you set your mind on what's going on and what's above, you get your things squared away, get your emotions in check, then you are ready to roll for a productive and powerful day. And that's it. The first few minutes of your day should be about resetting your mind and being ready to keep in your control throughout the day your thoughts and your emotions by realizing that it needs to be in God's control. You're putting it at his feet. And it works best if you have a predetermined, well-thought-out plan, a system that will keep you sane for what you want to do in the mornings. And it doesn't have to be my plan, but you do need to have a plan, a specific plan to help you be mindful of how your mind is working and get your days off to a good start. And two of my favorite Peloton instructors have sayings around this that are helpful. Chase Tucker says, win the morning, you'll win the day. And that's right. If you get your morning squared away, the rest of your day feels like it's under your control. And Selena Samuela says, you set your intention and follow through. And this is important. So if you're going to have a successful morning, that needs to start the night before. If you're going to try to get up today at a certain time and get a certain set of things done and get some quiet time with the Lord accomplished and all of that, get some writing done, by the way, for me. If you're going to do that the night before, you need to make sure you get a good night's sleep. You don't eat something that's going to give you acid reflux all night so you can't sleep. You don't drink too much so that you're going to oversleep and have a headache the next morning. You set your intention the night before about what the next morning is going to look like and you follow through, right? And here's how I do it. Here's my plan. You don't have to have the same plan as I do, but here's what I do. I pray while I'm brewing my first cup of coffee in the morning. I got a few minutes there getting the coffee thing going. I need some coffee to help me wake up. So I'm praying while I'm doing that. I put my headphones on. I listen to worship music. Lately, I've been really geeking out on Tommy Walker's new album, Highest Praises. And it's, it, if you haven't listened to it yet, go to TommyWalkerMinistries.org or any place you stream music. And you can listen to Highest Praises. It's about 45 minutes or so um, of, of just amazing worship that they've written. And that's I'm, right now I'm kind of I'm kind of camping out there because it's helping me get closer to God. And I read my Bible and I send one email. I don't get in my email and look around. I send one email every morning, first thing, and it's my Lee mail that I send to to Lisa. I send a love letter to my wife, Lisa, every single morning, the first email that I send every day, because I want her to know that she's at the top of my mind and the top of my heart, and I want to remind myself that, hey, of all the things I could be thinking about, of all the things I could be doing, after I spend a little time with the Lord, the first thing I want to do in the morning is remind myself what I think about related to my wife. That's going to that's gonna put my mind on being a better husband to her all day, to, to acknowledging her, seeing her, listening to her, promoting her, protecting her, thinking about her, and that's going to give me defense against anything else that might come along that day because I'm dwelling and resting in my relationship with her. And when she wakes up, once she goes through her routine and she finally gets to email, the first thing she's going to see is that her husband was thinking about her that morning. So that's part of my plan every day, to spend a little time working on my marriage. Now, otherwise, I do not go to my email inbox. I do not spend time in email until I have accomplished my own agenda. Brendan Burchard, one of my favorite motivational guys, he wrote, email is a highly organized way to let other people set your agenda for you. You think about that for a second. You want to spend your day under your control or do you want to spend it reacting to what other people wanted to send you the night before? That's a powerful way for you to get yourself kind of situated. Just stay away from email and set your own agenda. And the last thing I do is once I've done with all that, I read a short devotional every day that's called 300 Words a Day from John Swanson, my friend. He's been been on the podcast before. And John just has a short little blog and it always kind of gives me something fresh to think about. And you should check it out, 300wordsaday.com, all smashed together. Um, and John's little email takes about five minutes for me to read every day. And it just kind of gives me something fresh to, to put in my heart for the day. It's always helpful. And I read the verse of the day on biblegateway.com. So whatever I have in my own personal Bible study plan for the day, I always open up Bible Gateway and just see what the verse of the day is. And it's amazing how often that verse 
turns out to be something I needed for that day, a little bullet to put in my gun to fight the battle for that day. And the last thing is I, I pray, I pray about the words that I've read, about our family, about my wife, about the day ahead of me, that God will show me what I need to do. And I pray for the world and our leaders and our president and everybody. I just kind of get my brain on. That's how I start today. It sets my mind to help me succeed for the coming day. It gives me perspective. It makes me feel good. And on days when I oversleep or or you know, had a bad night the night before, or couldn't get some rest, or got called in. If I miss my routine in the morning, the whole day doesn't feel right. Everything's off because I didn't get my five R's. I didn't renew, reset, retake, be realistic, and be ready to roll. And it messes my day up. So after I do all those things, and that's about the first 45 minutes or one hour of every one of my days, that's when I write. That's when I record podcasts. That's when I work out. And lately, I haven't been working out as much as I want, but everything's got its season, right? So every day, I run through my system. That's what I do. People say, well, how do you have time to do all this stuff? Well, because I don't sleep till 7.30 and roll out of bed and be at work at 8. I manage my time so I can get enough time in the morning to get my routine because I know that's what I need to do to feel and be productive and, and be as connected to the Lord as I want to be. I need to have that time. For me, that system keeps me sane. So I'm careful with what I do at night so I can have that time in the morning. I don't go play golf with my friends five times a week. I don't. I just don't. I spend that time in the morning and I carve that time out for myself so the rest of the time I can be with my family and my friends and, and all of that. What about you? How can you start today? It's important for you to make your own system, to, to figure your own deal out, but to be giving that time to God and he will give it back to you in spades. I promise you, control, manage, reset, and it will all work out. Jesus said it, seek ye first the kingdom and all these things will be added to you. It's important, friend, to take charge of your own mind. Your routine doesn't have to look like mine, but having one will help. If you want to become healthier, feel better, and be happier, you can't get there until you can be in control of your own mind. You're too busy. I promise you, you are too busy to be spending energy worrying about the bear in the cave or where your keys are. You're too busy. you got to take those thoughts captive, and you will watch your life improve. But guess what? You have to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. That's patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack. Dot com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren, dot substack dot com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.
Stood 'neath the dirt we could never afford. 